Hey, I got my sunglasses on from my Hollywood look here, here in Hollywood, hot Texas. John Hennessy here at Hennessy Performance, and today we're going to do a quick test drive of our HPE 850 Shelby GT350. And uh, this is a package we've offered for the last year. We've probably built 20 or 25 of these cars. GT350, a great handling car. Probably the biggest knock against it is it needs more power and it doesn't have a whole lot of torque. It's perfect for a track car, but for out on the street, uh, guys like me want more. So I'm going to go drive it, give an impression on what it's all about. And uh, I love it in the black black with the matte black stripes and the little red pinstripes. Yeah. Otherwise, suspension, wheels, tires, brakes are stock, but uh, we're pushing, like I said, 850 horsepower at the motor, about 750 at the rear wheels on uh, Shell V-Power 93 octane gas. So we'll go drive it, talk about it, and uh, see you on the road. All right, here we are on our HP 850. Shelby GT3, GT350 Mustang. Man, I'm having a hard time twisting my words up here lately. Anyway, just out here, just cruising down the road, going past the shop, going up here to my little favorite driving loop. And the driving loop's not a road that I'll take every car on, but cars that have good to great handling, uh, it's fun to go on a windy road. And the GT350 does not disappoint on windy roads. So, um, you know, what are the general impressions of the car? So I'm cruising along here in six gear, 2400 RPM, and carry on a conversation, talk on the cell phone. So this would be a car that would be comfortable to take your wife, girlfriend, kids uh, for ride in. You can do road trips in it. Uh, it's not race car loud, uh, but I can tell you this, the, the 350 with our upgrades, when you're in the throttle, it's loud, and uh, especially for behind the car, which I think it sounds awesome. It has really just kind of a exotic muscle car sound to it. With the Voodoo engine, it still turns 8,200 RPM at redline, and uh, sounds pretty incredible in my opinion. Uh, the 2.9 liter supercharger system on this package is running about seven pounds of boost, and uh, we upgrade the fuel injectors, the fuel system, the air intake, and the throttle body. The exhaust is otherwise stock. I mean, we can put headers in these cars, pick up a little bit of power, make a lot more noise if you want more noise. The headers will definitely do a good job on that. But uh, the, the boosted the boosted Ford motors don't seem to need, they don't need much help in the exhaust and header department to make the power. This particular car dynoed about 730 to the rear wheels on 93 octane Shell V power. And uh, with a 15% driveline loss factor that's right at 850 horsepower at the motor there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of folks that never ceases to amaze me on social media or on video comments where they'll they'll wonder about hey what's the deal with you know you advertise this much power but your car only makes 730 well, it's at the wheel so I, I hope that whoever's watching this video if you're not quite sure what the difference is between the power at the engine, which is what the manufacturers rate the, all the motors that come from the factory, and typically tuner aftermarket racers will rate their power at the rear wheels because that's how our chassis dynos work. We don't pull the engine out and stick it on an engine dyno. But there's going to be a percentage of power that's lost between what's measured at the crankshaft and what actually goes through the wheels. And why is that? Well, it takes horsepower to turn the flywheel or, or, or go through the torque converter, go through the transmission, spin the drive shaft, uh, turn the, the differential, go through the axles, and then ultimately rotate the wheels and tires. Yeah, let me give it a little second gear here. A little bit start. Great brakes, great sounds. So, um, so there's some power. There's, you know, again, there's, there's flywheel horsepower, engine horsepower, and there's at the rear wheel. So we advertise our package as HP 850. That means 850 horsepower at the motor. We're not engine, engine dynoing this engine or any of the other engines that we build, but we dyno all of our vehicles before and after on our chassis dyno. So hope that helps. Uh, but again, people will watch this video and then there'll be a comment of, well, what's the difference between this and that? God bless you. It's okay. 
you'll figure it out at some point. Um, back to the car, the, uh, the GT350 is a car that I've owned a couple. I currently own a 350R, which I absolutely, absolutely love. It's got our uh, 575 package on it, so it's got intake, tune, and headers. Noticeably faster than stock, but I think I'm going to pull some of that stuff off and put the uh, supercharger on it. It just it, it just wakes the engine up to where it feels like the car could have or should have come from the factory like that. And maybe that's what, you know, at some point Shelby Ford come out with a, a GT500. I don't know if it'll be twin turbo or supercharged or what it'll be, but I love the handling. I love the, 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 the characteristics, the dynamics of a 350, uh, but it just needs more power. And by the way, if you get a chance to go to the Ford Performance Driving School at, uh, used to be Miller Motorsports Park, I think they now call it Utah Motorsports Campus or something like that, up in, uh, outside of Salt Lake. It's an awesome experience. Um, when I bought my 350s, you get the first day for free, so you get to go drive GT350s on a track, and you get to do it as part of your purchase price of your car, which I think is a tremendous deal. And until I did that school, I mean, I just had no idea how great the 350 handled. Uh, just something I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, what we learned at school and what they taught us, I would not normally do that on the street. We don't have, we don't have windy roads in the part of Texas that I live in. So it's pretty much straight line stuff. Anyway, if you get a chance to go to the Ford Performance Driving School, it is well worth it. Now they've got they've got a Raptor school and they've got a Focus RS school, and the instructors are they're all racers. They're they're all pretty badass in their own right. There's a guy named Billy Johnson who uh, has raced the Ford GT at Le Mans. He was one of our instructors. Brian, another guy named Brian Smith, is a school director. He's a friend of mine. Brian has driven our Venom GT to both world records that it set with the hard top at 270 and the convertible at 265. So great car guys great racers and a really really nice school fun cars and again you'll find out things about what ford vehicles are capable of that you just more than likely would never go out and discover on your own so anyway back to this beast again we're out here in the texas countryside just having a gingerly drive and just listen to those wonderful sounds and by the way the guys at the at the ford driving school Gave me some good pointers on my heel to toe. I'm not going to try to embarrass myself on on my heel toe downshift for today, but uh, Billy Johnson gave me some pretty good instruction on. It. I feel a little more confident, even with my gimpy right ankle, uh, to where if I'm out on a road course, that I could halfway uh, halfway decently execute a uh, heel to toe. The big takeaway that he taught me was that you want to you want to over blip, meaning that if you're coming to a a turn and you want to downshift a third or downshift a second when you when you kick your heel over to kick the gas pedal to raise the rpm up i said should i try to under blip or over blip and he said generally you want to just generally over blip and i kept finding that i wasn't i wasn't kicking the throttle enough i wasn't bringing up enough rpm so the downshift wasn't as smooth and then when i just just cranked my ankle in there and just whacked it really good and brought the rpm way up it really worked well so thanks billy for that i appreciate it uh, just cruising on down here with my buddy in the pickup truck what else so let's talk muscle cars so where does you know the question we get a lot is where does your you know where does the gt350 fit with the the zl1 and the and the hellcat and the demon again all i can really give you is my opinion i own i own a 350r I feel fortunate to get one. Uh, it's a, it, I haven't had a chance to take it on a track yet. I plan to at some point soon, hopefully before it gets too hot here in Texas, but it is an absolute handling weapon. Uh, again, it's only shortcoming in my opinion is, yeah, I, I want it to have more power. And so with this package, you know, we take a, a car that comes from the factory with, I think they're rated at 520 something horsepower. They make four, 450 or 460 to the wheels. Um, that's about 100 horsepower less to the wheels compared to the ZL1. And uh, it's about 150, 170 horsepower less than the Hellcat. Now it's lighter. Uh, it's lighter than the Hellcat. It's a little bit heavier than the, um, the ZL1. But the thing I like about the Mustangs, I like the outward visibility. Uh, it's a little bit bigger car than the Camaro. It's not as big and heavy as the, as the Hellcat. 
but I'd say that the Mustang and the 350 and the 350R are kind of right there in the middle in that it's a little more roomy, it's more comfortable, it's got the best outward visibility. In the case of the 350 or the 350R, I think the 350R is the best handling of the bunch. Now you've got, you know, Chevy's coming out with the ZL1 1LE, which I'm sure with the aero package and tires will be comparable or probably faster. Uh, you take it to a road course or something along those lines. Let's see here, which way is he going? Because we want to go the opposite way. Um, but again, I, you know, with what we do in terms of making fast cars go faster, the idea is to take a car like this and help it go. Yeah, come on. Traction control in third gear. Whoa, feel those brakes. There's that downshift. Anyway, where were we? I'm not quite sure. But, uh, you know, in terms of if you've got a Mustang or you've got a 350 and you're like, yeah, I love the car, but I don't want some guy in a Hellcat or some guy in a ZL1 to give me the beat down at the drag strip or on the road, this package will have you covered. It's not really designed as a drag racer. Uh, we run, we run them down the drag strip, and with the drag radial, you'll run a high, a high 10 at around 130 miles an hour. But these cars are really, how I like to drive it is from a roll. <clears throat> Does a great job in that regard. And you can still drive it every day. Comes with a warranty. The package comes with a warranty. Um, what else can we talk about? What you know? So we're talking. I'm in a Ford. Let's talk about Ford. Let's talk about why I like Ford stuff. Um, I like the guys at Ford. I like, you know, whether it's the, the executives or the engineers and there's, and there's, they're car guys. There's car guys at all car companies. And I know a lot of guys, a lot of the car companies, but I really like the, the, the culture of enthusiasts at Ford. And I think that that's, that's seen in their product line. And then the same thing could be said, uh, you know, to be true about the other manufacturers, but whether it's the Raptor, the Focus RS, the 350, the 350R, now the new Ford GT, which has just you know, been coming out. I think some of the executives at Ford have just taken delivery of their GTs over the last month or so. I was very fortunate I got an allocation for a car that'll probably be built towards the end of this year, early 2018. Um, you know, How did I get that? What did I do to deserve that? I, I really don't know other than um, you know, I'm a Ford fan. I'm an equal opportunity guy. I like all cars that are fast and fun to drive, but uh, I'm really looking forward to getting hold of that. You know, few friends that I've shared that with, they asked me, well, are you going to modify it? And first I'm like, those cars are going to be so collectible. You'd have to be crazy to modify one of those cars. But I don't know. The, the more I get to know and learn about the EcoBoost in, in, in the Raptors, the new Raptors, there's a lot of performance potential there. So I can't say for sure one way or the other whether we're going to modify or not modify the new Ford GT, but at this point, I've gone from no way Jose to maybe we'll probably do a little something to it, which in reality means, you know, we'll probably do something really crazy and stupid, so who knows. Uh, what else in the Ford department? we got a lot to talk about as far as the new uh, Ford Raptor and our Velociraptor program goes, but I'm not going to get too much into that today. Uh, the Raptor's been very popular. Uh, we've been doing an, a lot of development work on it for the last several months and we'll be sharing some new upcoming videos here pretty soon of what our Veloc Velociraptors are doing on the dyno and what they sound like. And one thing that I will tell you, and one of the reasons why we've been somewhat quiet about the new Raptor is, you know, with the EcoBoost engine, uh, it, let's just say that the the, 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 the new Raptor trucks, they sound okay from the factory. But once you start trying to modify that exhaust, and there's some systems that are out there, I'm not going to name any names, but you can take an okay exhausting, sounding exhaust system on the new Raptor to a horrible, embarrassing fart can on wheels. And, and you know what I'm talking about. The guys with the, you know, the Hondas and the little ricers going down the roads where they just sound horrible. And uh, there's videos on YouTube, you can look them up, where different exhaust manufacturers, as soon as the Raptor came out, they were like, well, here's our great sounding exhaust system, and they just sounded horrible. So we literally, we spent months, and we've tried a lot of different combinations of mufflers and 
in pipe size and again we can make plenty of power out of the new Raptor that's not a problem but to me it has to have a proper sound and so uh, we'll let you be the judge when we put those videos out and I think again they're never gonna the, the, here's the bottom line of the Raptor the, the the EcoBoost V6 twin turbo Raptor it's never gonna sound as good as a V8 it's never gonna have this sound so how can we take that that twin turbo V6 and give it the best sound that we can I think that our team and the exhaust guys that we work with have come up with a really neat combination and uh, makes a lot of power a lot of torque a lot of fun to drive and i think it has a properly good sound to it all right back to doing a little driving here now a little bit of a verbal on the downshift there and we're getting tire spin in third gear there so i'm gonna just go hello country the cows are probably like what in the heck is going on it's that crazy Hennessy guy out for a test drive again can slow it on down here what else Ford so we talked about the GT uh, up quick update on my focus RS I've got I don't know 12,000 miles on my on that car it's my daily driver um it's got our hp 400 tune kit in it which is like 700 bucks it's the it's the cheapest and best bang for the buck that we offer as a company i think we've sold and delivered probably over 100 of those kits now to customers around the globe had great success with those packages no failures no issues of any kind and uh, it's been a great car um what else what else news coming from ford Maybe a GT500, we'll see. Been hearing that rumor for a while, but haven't seen anything yet. But as far as I'm concerned, right now, you know, if you want the ultimate performance car from Ford that you can actually access, the GTs are hard to get, and they're, you know, $500,000 plus with, with options. Um, the GT350 is a pretty neat car, and uh, with another, you know, you can spend six or 700 bucks, or you can spend 20 grand modifying like this car. Um, it'll run with or beat a ZL1 in a straight line. It'll run with or beat a Hellcat in a straight line. And I think it's a better handling car than both cars. And I think the ZL1 is a great handling car too. Don't get me wrong. But I think there's just something special about the 350 and especially the R. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'm not going to just keep talking and keep talking even though we're almost into the end of our little test road here. But uh, if you've got a GT350 GT350 or another Ford product and we can uh, help you make it go faster, let us know. Thanks for tuning in.